I guess there's a lot of hidden labor in, in this that I, I, I agree that scholarly publishing absolutely needs reform, and I'm not, I'm not debating that at all. But I think, but I worry that there's a lot of hidden labor that's not acknowledged here. And I think there's this is this points back to the community that is doing this labor. And I think there's uh, I worry that 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 in itself is going to will be hard to get consistent results across. As I feel like what I see right now with with this kind of with these kinds of models is you have the uh, sort of rich get richer and poor get poorer kind of model where certain people have a lot of name recognition and they have a lot of following and their work it gets increasingly more cited whereas there's a larger number of people at the bottom whose work never even gets considered and looked at. So if everything is left to um, for the community itself to assign value, I guess I worry that, that without uh, the role of um, without the role of an objective editorial board or whatnot to actually point people in the direction of this work that it doesn't come out. And, and, I, and there's, a, there's obviously yes. that's a, that's a a challenging statement in itself, but I do, but but I do, I see enough of that that where it, where those kinds of situations do work, where um, ordinarily this work would be overlooked, but uh, this uh, system that we have currently allows for it to get exposure. So I, I guess maybe the real question I have is, why can't we have both? Can't we do? Do we? Is, it, is there a space for both of these things? First, first point is of course the word objective. I'm I'm not sure whether I can perceive a very exclusive kind of process that happens behind doors as an objective criteria for identifying quality. The only object objectiveness that you get with that is statistics. So you can say, uh, statistically spoken, the, the selection that we do in our journal is something that is better than some other selections that are done. Um, but then again, I think the real it's, for me, it's a kind of mathematics, right? You, you look at something, and, you, and, and I'm oversimplifying. You ask two people to do peer review on, on an article before you decide what you do with that article and maybe publish at some point in time. Now, instead, my model is we ask whoever is out there. So if you look around, there are basically two types of publications that you have, again, oversimplifying in this market. One is I'm one of those researchers. I, I'm so specific in what I'm researching that I know the 17 people around the world that are dealing with that. So there is no better peer review ever than those 17 people looking at this thing and, and, uh, and, and grabbing the positive parts and, and discussing the negative parts. That by itself must be a better peer review than selecting two people that may not even know enough about that specific field. The other, the other extreme is I'm, I'm, uh, it's a very broad kind of thing, a very general kind of thing that I'm dealing with. Uh, then you could argue, well, most likely a good editorial board will have uh, two or three people or access to two or three people that are qualified to, to do that. But you know what? If I put that out there, there are at least that many people who are qualified to do that. So if I would find and that's where I, it gets into methodology, if I would find a method that would allow me to understand a certain qualification as a prerequisite of that peer review, and the second thing is if I would also be able to make sure that whoever does that peer review puts his name to that peer review. So if I, if I think that your article was really not good enough, and I point that out, whatever my reasoning is for that, and I put my name underneath, then I think that's the best you can get. It's at the end of the day, you get a real, you get a real comment by somebody who stands up to, for his comment. And if there are other people who think differently, they will stand up for that too. So it's really at the end of the day, making this process public brings much, much more benefit to the whole content because it really allows a public debate about something that is, that is presented instead of keeping it behind walls for half a year or a year and then come up with something that may be already, you know, not that fresh anymore. What, a, but I, I, what about the issue of um, if people don't want to speak publicly about something and, I, I, mean, the, I mean, I publish books, first of all, so this is kind of a different 
there's, there's obviously a lot of similarities, but there's a lot, a lot of differences too in terms of getting people to read a 500 page manuscript is gonna be harder to just put that out there and assume that people will do that. Um, that's, that's, I can't make that assumption. Um, but I think what I have found though, that, and I think this, this probably holds true within the journal space, is if uh, sometimes it's, it would be impolitic to critique someone's article openly um, and, but the feedback that is provided by a blind peer review process is actually quite valuable. Um, is, do you worry about those kinds of dangers? Of I'm sure they may happen, and there's always cases for, every, for everything, I'm sure about that. Uh, do I worry about it? Not really, because I think there is, it's sort of the, the price and the cost, right? By opening it all up, making it all public, there's a price to be paid. And we all know that a public judgment of something is not by definition right, right? I mean, that's not the debate that we can get involved in. But you also learn that over time, public commentary works like a like bubble sort. So it basically brings up the real essence of something. Even if at the beginning there, were, there may be bias, uh, uh, was, was some bias in, involved by some people. Because at the end of the day, or to put it the, uh, the other way around, scientific work as such has a certain perceived value at a certain point in time. That value is not constant, and the perception is not constant. So the, 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 how much this work provides in, in important information or not, the valuation of that changes. Also, the, the importance of people change, and their perce the perception of that importance changes. So even if there is some bias in a, in a, at a starting point, it will most likely just fade away. The point is that I try to make is it, there is no perfect system, but there is more perfection in transparency than in hidden processes. That's my strong belief. <laughs>